Armando Hasurigan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook, Armando Hasurigan. Please like. Here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to continue on with the metabolism app, the metabolic pathway, and look into the oxidative phosphorylation process, also known as the electron transfer chain. So if you remember from uh, glycolysis, we obtained two nicotinum, nicotinide adenine dinucleotide, um, or two NADHs, and we also yield two NADHs from the preparatory step. And from the Krebs cycle, we yielded six um, NADHs and two FADH2s. So what are these? They are electron carriers. That is what they are. And we use them to feed them into the oxidative phosphorylation, into the electron transfer chain, so that we can make ATPs out of them, so we can make energy out of them. The electron transport chain is, a, is within the inner mitochondrial membrane. Oxidative phosphorylation occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And so the, the two NADHs from glycolysis have to come inside the mitochondria. And so the total amount of NADHs and, and FADHs we have from glycolysis, preparatory step, and the citric acid cycle is 10 NADHs and two FADH2s. And now remember, in the mitochondria, we have two membranes, the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And in between, we have the intermembrane space. The electron transport chain, oxidative phosphorylation, occurs within the inner membrane of the mitochondria, as well as the intermembrane space and the matrix, of course. And what electron, the electron transport chain does, oxidative phosphorylation process does, is that it will produce water, six water, essentially. And also it will produce between 26 to 28 ATP, depending. And we'll see why this amount depends later on. So now if we tally up all the substances used and produced from glycolysis, the preparatory step, uh, Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation, it will overall equate to this uh, formula of cellular respiration, where one glucose uh, with oxygen will produce carbon dioxide, water, um, and energy. And how much energy is produced? Well, it's all this ATP produced from glycolysis, uh, uh, citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. So if we tally up all the amounts of ATP produced from the oxidation of one glucose molecule, we would get about 30 to 32 ATPs. So one glucose will make from glycolysis, preparatory step, Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosph phosphorylation between 30 to 32 ATPs. Knowing this, let's look back at our map and learn in a bit more detail the oxidative, oxidative phosphorylation process. So here's oxidative phosphorylation. It occurs, um, the proteins, the structural proteins, are within the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Now oxidative phosphorylation, the electron transport chain, consists of four important complexes. These are complex one, complex two, which is the succinate dehydrogenase, which we learned from the Krebs cycle, complex 3 and complex 4. Another important uh, protein structure within uh, the oxidative phosphorylation process is um, this structure here, which actually is known as ATP synthase. And this enzyme is what produces ATP. And we'll look and we'll learn about how it actually produces ATP. Other important structures within the inner membrane is ubiquinone, and also cytochrome C, which is in the intermembrane space of the complex attached to complex 3. Complex 1, 2, 3, and 4 are known as the electron transport chains because they transport electrons from 1, essentially, to 4. And they get the electrons from the electron carriers, the FADH2s and the NADH. And so they transport the electrons from 1 to 4, complex is 1 to 4, and at complex 4, they will give the electrons to oxygen to produce water. So you can see that oxygen is the final electron acceptor. And also during this process, ATP will be made through the pumping of hydrogen ions. And we'll learn about this now. It should be noted that in this diagram, I'm only going to talk about the overview of oxidative phosphorylation. And I'll provide a link or another video uh, where you can learn more about um, the electron transport chain. So let's begin with complex one first. Complex one will oxidize NADH to form NAD. 
uh, and therefore complex 1 is actually known as NADH dehydrogenase. And during this process, the electrons will be obtained from, N from the oxidation of NADH, and the electrons will be passed on to ubiquinone. And also during this process, pro uh, uh, hydrogen ions are pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space, four to be specific. Complex 2, known as succinate dehydrogenase, will first uh, reduce FAD to FADH2 from the Krebs cycle, from succinate. But then it will oxidize FADH2 to steal its electrons and then pass it on to ubiquinone. Now something very, very important, something important to re-understand is that ubiquinone can only carry electrons either from NADH or from FADH. It can't carry electrons from, for both of them. And so uh, electrons from NADH and FADH are carried by ubiquinone separately. And so to make this easier, uh, let's, we will follow the electrons obtained from NADH only. So we're looking at ubiquinone carrying the electrons from NADH only. And so now ubiquinone, because it's mobile, it can move around the inner membrane space and give these electrons to complex 3, known as cytochrome BC1 complex, or cytochrome C oxyreductase. It has many names. And so ubiquinone will give these electrons to complex 3, which, will then, which complex C will then give it to cytochrome C. And cytochrome C is interesting because it is a mobile protein, same as ubiquinone. And cytochrome C can travel to complex 4. Complex 3, as well as giving the electrons to cytochrome C, um, will also pump hydrogen ions, four hydrogen ions to be specific, from the matrix into the intermembrane space. Next, the cytochrome C gives the electrons to complex 4, known as cytochrome C oxidase. And now, here the electrons will um, make water, essentially, from oxygen. So the electrons from NADH, because remember we're following uh, the electrons uh, taken from NADH, will help reduce two hydrogen ions and half an oxygen gas, uh, which is essentially one oxygen molecule, to form one H2O, one water. And also during this process, um, complex 4 will pump hydrogen ions as well, two hydrogen ions to be specific. Now, because we've accumulated all these hydrogen ions from uh, one either one um, NADH or one FADH2s, we have all these hydrogen ions being pumped from the complexes into the intermembrane space. And so what do we do with these hydrogen ions? Well, we will, we will put them, pass them through the, uh, the ATP synthase. And as we pass it through the ATP synthase, this will actually provide energy to convert ADP with inorganic phosphate to form ATP. It's actually four hydrogen ions being pumped which will convert ADP plus inorganic phosphate to form ATP. So four hydrogen ions will equate to one ATP. Now this might sound all confusing, but um, in another video for oxidative phosphorylation we'll learn about it in more detail um, to help better understand it. Um, but essentially from oxidative phosphorylation from 10 NADHs and two FADH2s, uh, we'll obtain between 26 to 28 ATP, and also six, only six water. Um, what I'm confused is, why is it six water? I actually do not know the answer why it's only six. If you know, please tell me. But what I'm guessing is, it's because we have to follow the cellular respiration equation, which tells us that six carbon dioxide, six water, and energy is produced. And all this is produced from uh, six oxygen gases. And if you remember at the very beginning, one glucose molecule. And so because of this equation, uh, it will only make six water. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you click on the link, you can learn more about oxidative phosphorylation and why uh, 10 NADHs and 2 FADH2s produce between 26 to 28 ATPs through oxidative phosphorylation. Thank you.